What's up? Alex Warner playing LRJ. Who I've never heard about. And, uh. We can take on E4 here. This is a, a pretty known line. Now we can take on D4, and now it's a transposition to an, an even better known line. Um. I, I used to play knight c3 there. This actually is a pretty unknown line. <laughs> to me at least. Uh, by far the normal move there is... Uh, bishop takes d5. So I'm pretty shocked here. <laughs> I have no idea what to do. I think the normal move in such a position is bishop b4. So I think we'll just do that. I think c3 is probably coming, but I, I should take that. I mean, what else is there? So if c3 takes, and if pawn takes bishop c5, I guess? Just threatening f2. I mean... I don't know. I, I, I think this bishop b5 should be rubbish, but... You can take a pawn here, but then we're going to take f2, and that's just horrible for him. For instance, if knight takes, b takes is uh, already very good. So yeah, now it's somewhat reminiscent of Scott's Gambit uh, structure. In which case, I should play bishop d7, actually. But we have a few extra pawns here. We're just two pawns up, and this... Well, this can't be good by any means. I think bishop b6 might be a good move, and then c5, c4, c5, then you can take on e4 though. Take on e4, take on e4, yeah, that's pretty, pretty nice. So if he takes rook e8 or, or takes on d4 first, yeah, if bishop takes then rook e8 is crushing. Yeah, rook e8 still. Maybe even bishop f5 now. Bishop b5. This feels like it should work. If he takes, bishop takes d4 should be winning, but if he doesn't... Then, uh, well... It doesn't matter anymore, but then we could t probably take somehow. Win somehow, anyways. I mean... What is he to do here? e3 is hanging... <laughs> That can't be a good move either. Hmm. I, I said that, and then this is pretty annoying. Well, no, it's not annoying. Sorry, it's kind of it's kind of so good, but uh, it's less obvious than I thought it'd be. How's that ever working? I mean, I can go something like that, and I win a2, but yeah, like I said, this is less, less easy than I hoped it'd be. Yeah, we can go like that. And what now? How to continue here? Probably need to get my king active somehow. Okay, now it's time. Can we go like that? Or like this? I mean, there are some mate threats here, I guess. The king is going to f3 and... The threat is just rook c1 mate. Yeah, okay. Well, I don't mind which is better. We're just winning G1 now. Whew. So yeah, less clear than I hoped, but uh, at least a win still, so that's nice. He's in the exam, so I'll just make my own game. So yeah, we can check this out now. So... It is kind of... let me just first off, let me show you what the Scotch Gambit is. So that's like this. Uh, what? I'm fucking up. Uh, bishop c4 here. 
yeah, and then e5. So this is the this is the Scots Gambit, and now it's something like he played. It's it it we got a position where it looked like he played c3 here, and we have this we have won this this e5 pawn. So this one is off, and we've won another pawn somewhere. I think. So you could you could strike this e5 pawn, and you could strike this b2 pawn. I think we have the, somewhat of the same position. It's in the game, so we'll check that later. It's something like this. Um, I just want to check real quick. So yeah, this position it's something like that. Uh, he has got the the castle and the rookie one there in there, but. Uh, those two moves to win these two pawns, I mean, this should be very good for us, and indeed the engine says it is. So let's go back to the game. I, I just thought it was somewhat more worth mentioning. Um, the structure is pretty similar. So this bishop c4 is the Italian game, and uh, yeah, there are two moves here, knight f6 and bishop c5, but I usually opt for the knight f6 move, although with white I find uh, bishop c5 to be annoying as well but yeah it's hard to gain an edge against this but it's also hard to go for an edge with black I think whereas with uh, knight f6 you can more easily go for an advantage so. uh, castle and now we can take on e4 yeah I've searched a lot in these lines just for a move order to find something with white but it's hard I mean, this castle move order doesn't do anything if black goes knight takes e4. Um, you could go bishop d5 here, I somewhat remember. I, I, I even think knight c3 is a move here, if I'm correct. And then if bishop, d, bishop b7, which is a very normal move, queen d5 comes and this is... This is known to be somewhat annoying for uh, for black because you you don't really have an idea where your pawns are going. For instance, if queen e4 here, you you'd like to go c6 and d5 here, but c6 and bishop d3 comes, I believe. And there are some problems here for one rookie one and going for bishop h6, stuff like this. It's pretty annoying, and maybe this is even okay still, but. In a practical game, I don't know. But I think you have to go h6 somewhere, maybe even here. I think that was some of the recommendations. I can't quite remember, but I know uh, that one of the ideas of castle here is knight c3. Um, so yeah, there's that. Uh, d4 is definitely a move. But this just transposes into, uh, well, into d4 here. This is the same. And also, uh, even like this, this is also the same. Same move order. So, if you want to, uh, same position, I mean, not the same move order, for sure. If you want to look at this, uh, these lines with white or black, uh, it's important that you know all these move orders and all the differences they entail so maybe this guy just messed up his move order and thought he was in the Scots Gambit which I showed at the very beginning of the analysis because then if d5 uh, then if d5 you want to go bishop b5 or maybe he just didn't know that he could take here on, on d5 that's also a possibility like I said during the game, by the way, I, I used to play knight c3 here, which is actually very fun. If they take with the pawn, that is. So then you can take there, and this is just a total mess. Makes for a fun game. Um, but yeah, no one ever plays that, strangely enough. Uh, this rookie one is by far the, the normal choice, and d5. This is known to be a very dryish line. Uh, you could go queen h5, knight takes, and then bishop d6, I think, is the draw. And then queen d5, c3. This is known to be just a draw. 
So knight takes, knight takes, queen takes, queen takes, pawn takes. And this is just opposite colored bishops, similar structure, easy draw. I wasn't going to go for that to be honest, <laughs> but yeah, it is known to be uh, in, in normal games to be such an easy draw. There is one uh, way of continuing, which is so yeah, this queen h5 has a lot of merit, but uh, there's also for white, I think queen a5 is the main idea here. Uh, knight g5, castle, knight takes, knight takes, uh, yeah, rook takes, bishop d6, bishop g5, rook e8, and now the point is, now the point is you have to go queen e1, if I'm correct, to have any somewhat something in the ending or something like that. So if you go queen e2, he could go king d7, and if rook e1, which seems like a normal move, you have queen takes e1 with an easy draw even somewhat better for black. So to avoid that you have to go queen e1 here. But I mean this is also still still very easily to draw to be honest. Uh, I heard this from an IM once who said like this is somewhat better for white but I I just don't see it. Uh, it might be that I'm just too weak, it might be that there's nothing here. Uh, I don't know. Maybe this is a this is a small advantage for white. Um, I do believe players who play this with white think that that's um, a better ending. But yeah, they've yet to prove it to me. Anyways, uh, with black, I think you have to go for queen h5 because the ending with the ending we just had, uh, there's just nothing for black to do. Black is just playing to draw. There's no win. So if knight c3. Queen h5 is a uh, is a valid alternative. If people on the are on the autopilot and play knight g5, you you already have an advantage. So bishop g5 is the move then. And like I said, bishop d6 easily draws. So if you're out for a draw, you could play that. You could also go for h6, which is the move I play. Bishop f6, we can't take that because of knight takes f6 check. But there are some moves here. Queen g6 is probably the most prudent one. Knight h4 and then queen h7 is... This is just interesting to say the least. Um, but instead he went for the crazy bishop d5 b5 and it's kind of shocking such a move. I mean, Knight takes d4 is coming and f3 is coming next so I think bishop b4 is definitely a very uh, precise move. Because we want to, uh, it, it kind of messes white up. Because we want to just cancel quickly. Uh, and if he goes c3, then we have some pressure along this diagonal with bishop c5, like we had in the game. So I think a move like bishop d2 is probably better. And if we take here, uh, which I wasn't going to do, I was going to for uh, bishop c5 actually. Because then there's no more knight takes d4. Like if I go bishop c5 here, he can just take still on d5, d4. Seems to be very good for us still, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I I don't yet see why. I think castle and we're fine, but yeah, somewhat like in the game as well, because the knight went to d4 there as well. But yeah, um, I could go b4 here though. I don't know. We're definitely more than okay here, definitely. But I think Bishop B2 is a much better alternative than C3, because now Bishop C5 does make more sense. And this castle is just so easy. For instance, now there are some Queen of Six threats, and you can take here. But oh, there's a nice maiden too now. Suffocation. I don't know how, to, how that's called in uh, in English, actually. But yeah, it's a it's a very standard mate. Um. So yeah, this is just very bad for him. He could take with the bishop as well. 
out. And if he takes with the knight, he could drop back to uh, to d4 then, I guess. But yeah, still, this is just horrible. Still, but there are just too many pieces coming, and it's just winning for sure. So he can't take on c6. Oh, to be precise, he can't take twice on c6. And I was treating this like a, a messed up scotch gambit. And in that variation, you just have to go bishop d7 and just white has to take on c6 sometime, and which he did. And then you normally drop back to b6, play c5, c4, and then you're fine. <laughs> That's the main gist, gist of it. But uh, now it gets interesting. The c5 might be objectively worse than ninety six, but I just like the move. Of, it just opens up uh, files and diagonals and stuff like that. So Because now, if he takes, for instance, with the bishop, which seems like the more natural move, then rook here just wins outright. Because he can't defend the, the rook there. Well, he can, but then we can take his queen, so... Um, so he has to take with the pawn, which he did. And then there are just so many tricks here. Um, all revolving around this pawn, I guess. Queen d3 is... Well, it just makes it so much easier. Yeah, I was deciding between which which diagonal to go. But I think it's just so much easier now. There are already some tricks uh, revolving around queen, uh, rook takes uh, e3. So for instance, queen d2, we could probably take, take here and then take on e3. Or take on e3 immediately is probably even better. Oh yeah, then bishop takes, yeah, for sure. Now queen takes, and it's just I'm attacking e3, I'm attacking a1, threatening bishop takes b1, I'm threatening bishop uh, queen takes d2. There are just so many threats, and there's no defense here, so he took. Yeah, and I kind of blew it. I, I had to go rook takes d3 here. I went bishop takes d4, which is definitely worse than just taking on e3. Uh, and it's a shame because. It would be a fitting way to end this game. I mean, there's no point of continuing here. Um, there is one nice trick here, for instance. If queen f2, check, and then bishop d4, and just exploiting the fact that this one is underdeveloped and this one is underdeveloped. So we're winning another piece here. And he had to go for something like that, because I'm threatening queen takes e3 and queen g1 may. This knight can't move, for instance. Now we're taking the knight. Uh, there are just, well, also, we can just take on a1 and then take on e3. But, I mean, there are just too many threats to handle here. I think rook f1 is probably best of the worst, but because we could, we could fall for something like this and mate but we could go for bishop takes d4 here and now there's no more mate and we're threatening all kinds of stuff but for one being bishop takes a1 so yeah um, rook takes e 3 is so much clearer e3 um, instead we took on d4 which is a shame I totally missed this move but I to be honest, I missed rook, D, rook takes e3 in that particular at that particular time, but yeah, it happens, you know. It sucks, but it happens. And this move I kind of missed. Bishop takes e1. I wasn't willing to do this. Although it kind of makes sense because we're going to mate him. I do think this gives him a lot of practical chances. Him having a queen and all. I think I'd just like to uh, get into an ending with two pawns up. Which we are here. This should be easier. Although the engine says this is objectively worse, I think this is practically just better. But yeah. 
h5 is a nice move because we're winning a2 back. I didn't see this bishop takes a7 at all, but somewhat lucky. And I was hoping for something like this because then we'd win easily. It's a this. But no such luck. And it's still somewhat hard to win this if he just, well, passes. But he can't really pass, that's the point. Uh, we're gonna go for like bishop e5, king f5, king e4, and just hold. But this move is pretty ugly, because now we can just drop in. And it's just so hard to defend against this rook c1. The engine likes h4, but uh, yeah, this seems normal, but bishop d4, and just a win. And now we just resign, because yeah, it's an obvious resign here. We are just gonna take this. Just run with the pawn. So yeah, pretty sweet game. Uh, we get the win, so that's nice. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.